بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعد أما بعد قال الله عز وجل لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من ولده ووالده والناس أجمعين أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحن العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين أمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا إن شاء الله في هذه الحلقة we will continue going over the seerah of the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and inshallah it will be a short, short halaqa in the previous halaqas that we had where we, we started the introduction to seerah and we discussed why one learns the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there were many opinions, many reasons given some of which is so we understand the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we create love and reverence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members in our hearts and that in tail gives us the ability to respect Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam and respect and act upon the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this religion of Islam. Then it gives us the ability and the power to remove any doubts that people have regarding Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For example, we mentioned that the famous story of Waqiyatul Ifq the story of of where Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she was tormented and she was put on the, under scrutiny because they believed that she had c committed adultery billah, when she was in the marriage of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So through learning the seerah, understanding the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the biography and the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, we understood, we understand these incidents and it removes any doubts and misconceptions that we may have then we further went on to understand the lineage of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam the family line of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and we are still going through the names of the pater the paternal and maternal uh, family members of nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam we discussed the the famous family members such as quraish and we went through qusay ibn kilab Abu Manaf and His now we are grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Imam Shafi'i and Imam Malik rahimahumullah ta'ala they both write about the life of Hashim the great grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they mentioned that his actual name his real name was not Hashim but Amr and Amr during the time of his period in Mecca there was a severe drought that came about and he understood that the life in Mecca, in the life of the people of Mecca, it was his duty. He took it upon himself to ensure that they lived the best life. He was the leader of the, the, his time in his era of his people of Mecca. And he understood that he had a great responsibility upon himself. So one, on, on the time when the drought became very severe, Hashim or Amr, he went and he crushed bread and he added it into gravy. And then he fed every single person of Mecca with this. And he then, because he did this act of crushing the bread himself and putting it into the gravy, in the Arabic language, the word given to that person who crushes something. So for example, in this instance, he was crushing the bread. He was crumbling the bread. So in the Arabic language, the word used is Hashim, the person who crushes. So that is why he was given this name of Hashim because he kept this responsibility of, of protecting his people by himself sitting there crushing and crumbling the bread and putting it into gravy so that he could feed his people. So he was given this nickname of Hashim and that is where Banu Hashim, the family line of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gets their name of Hashim because he, the great grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took this responsibility seriously. Even in the time when people were arrogant, people had pride, that I am something in the eyes of the people. I am the leader of the people. 
he still had humility, humbleness, and he understood that his role, what, what it was in society, what, is, what, what it was in his community. And he, he came down to a level where he helped his people by doing something which was minute. A minute action such as crushing up bread and crumbling bread so that he could feed his people. So he was given this nickname of Hashim. Not as a bad sign, but rather as a good quality that he helped his people. They further mention Imam Shafi'i and Imam Malik rahimahumullah ta'ala that he was extremely generous. And this is where Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gets his generosity from his family line. And this quality goes down into the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That his table, just the way Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would keep his table open, his dastakhan open, his tablecloth open for people to come and sit and enjoy in the meal. Hashim, the great grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also had this quality. They say that he was so handsome that his face would be radiant and so radiant that people would be able to see the seal of Nubuwa in on his forehead. And they would think that <clears throat> from this person's lineage or in the future of this person's lineage, there will be something big. There will be someone big that will come about. And they would mention this in the books of history that throughout the lineage and the line, the family line of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there would be certain individuals that would hold the seal of Nubuwa, that would hold this light of Nubuwa on their foreheads, on, on their faces. And they knew that from this noble line, someone will come. And we, we will discuss f further as well. But it is known that Abdullah, the father of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, also possessed this, uh, this rare light of Nubuwa. This light that was seen in his head, on his forehead and on one occasion, we will, we will discuss this inshallah maybe in the next, next few halaqas. But in the time of marriage, when Abdullah married Amina radiallahu ta'ala, the father of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, on the night of marriage with Amina radiallahu ta'ala anha, when everybody was there, they saw this light of Nubu on his face and on his forehead. And the next day, when he woke up and when he came into the, into the community, this light of Nubu was re removed. The historians then mention that because at the time of consummation of marriage, this light of Nubuwa went into the baby, and that was Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this light of Nubuwa has come down, this radiant light that acknowledges that there will be someone in this family line who will be, do great things. It, was, it had come down from generations. So it was also seen in the forehead and in the uh, face of the great-grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Amr, Yani Hashim, where the line of Banu Hashim comes from. He passed away at a younger, young age of 25. Hashim, the great grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, passed away at the age of 25. On one occasion, Hashim was on a trade journey and he stopped in Medina. When they would go for trade, they would go to Yathrib, which was known as Medina. They would go to Yemen, they would go to Syria. So on one occasion, he went to Medina. And in this marketplace where he went to sell his goods, buy his goods, he found a beautiful woman. And she was not just beautiful, but she was very intelligent in the way she was giving trade or she was doing trade with Hashim. He inquired about her and he found out that she had two sons from beforehand. And the, her, her husband had given her divorce. So in that time as well, just as now sometimes it is looked down upon that when a woman has been given divorce, then sometimes people do not marry her. But Hashim, he understood that this woman was an intelligent woman. She was a beautiful and intelligent woman and she possessed something which other women did not possess. That she had such skills in trade. So he knew and he understood that she was of a high status woman. She was of a noble woman. So he inquired about her and he sent a marriage proposal. When she found out that this was Hashim and what his lineage was, she readily and immediately accepted the marriage proposal. She, she asked that I have two sons from a previous marriage. But Hashim, he did not care about this. He understood the lineage of this woman. He understood the intelligence of this woman. And, he, and the nobility of this woman that he accepted the proposal, or he sent the proposal, and even though she had two sons, he accepted her. She became quickly, and the baby that came from this marriage of Hashim and this woman was known as Abu, Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When Hashim, or when Abdullah, Abdul Muttalib 
was born Hashim he did all the rituals that had to be done and Abdullah Abdul Muttalib grew started to grow up when it was time for Hashim the father of Abdul Muttalib the great grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he had to migrate or he had to go on a trade journey which was an important trade journey he he did not want to go on this trade journey but he had to go with a group of people on this trade journey they went to today's day and age known as Gaza Palestine and he passed away at the age of 25 in Gaza and he is also buried in Gaza so the family line of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam or the great grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away at the age of 25 and in Gaza in Palestine today and he is also buried there now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his wisdom he does many of these signs he does many of these Allah actions but the ulama, the historians, they deduct different lessons, different aspects of why this, these things could happen or what is the reason behind them. Gaza, now we know what is happening. And for the past many, many years, things have been happening in Gaza. But look at this, that the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the lineage of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is also buried in Gaza. The Anbiya alayhi wa salatu wa salam, every single Anbiya that came into this world came to Palestine. Every sing, some of the Anbiya alayhi salatu are also buried in, in, in Palestine. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will in fact, through his wisdom, when the time is right, will save these people of Gaza as well. And we learn this from the Ahadith. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, many a times in the Ahadith, he mentions these prophecies. Abdul Muttalib, the grandfather of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his story his history lesson is quite long inshallah so we will try and do some of it for this halaqa and we'll continue in the next halaqa inshallah but abdul muttalib his real name was shayba shayba was given to him because of a specific reason when he was born shayba or abdul muttalib was born with some, with a birthmark a specific type of birthmark a piece of white hair one strand of white hair on his head so to a person who looks at the head of a baby, when they see this, it may look weird and funny. But this was a reason or there was a wisdom behind this. And that is because of his wisdom. That the wisdom that Abdul Muttalib possessed from a young age, it was seen through this one white strand. So in Arabic, when someone has one white strand, just one single white strand of hair or a few strands of white hair, it is known as Shayba. So he was given this name of Shayba. Then further in his life, his name was given Abdul Muttalib. And we will go through this as well, inshallah. When, from, a, from birth, he was incredibly handsome. And people would think that why such a handsome baby has, given this, has been given just one strand of white hair. So r r the commentators and the ulama and the historians mention that this is one reason why people, or why he was given this one strand of white hair is because when one sees a white hair on a baby from birth it looks weird it looks to an extent people may say ugly or it may look funny so because of his handsomeness they did not want to give him the evil eye they did not want to make it so that he has afflictions and illnesses in his life so through that one hair one white strand of white hair or a few strands of white hair people would look at his face and say that he is beautiful and handsome but when they would see his hair then they would feel a sort of distance that this does not look right for a baby. So they, they would remove themselves from giving the evil eye to this baby. This is the, these are the wisdoms of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Further in his life, when his father Hashim passed away, his mother, Abdul Muttalib's mother, the wife of Hashim, she used to live with her people in Banu Khazraj, in Madinatul Munawwara. As he grew older, Abdul Muttalib, Shayba's uncle, Muttalib, whose name was Muttalib, he came, so the brother of Hashim, his name was Muttalib, he came to Medina to the mother of Abdul Muttalib, Shayba, and he asked her that can I take Muttalib and, and, and keep him under my protection, keep him under me so that he, I can prepare him for the life that he, will, he is about to live. So because he did not have his father figure, it was in that time where the uncles would be take would take responsibility of the children. So Abd, so Muttalib, the uncle of Abdul Muttalib, the Oshayba, he took Abdul Muttalib under his wing. 
while he is on the tender ages of five, six years old, Muttalib, the uncle of Abdul Muttalib, takes this young child, this boy, and puts him on the back of his camel. He is in dirty clothes. He looks shevelled, dishevelled. So the people thought that he was the slave of Muttalib. And due to this, his, his clothes were ripped. He was dirty. His hair was all over the place. He, wasn't, he did not look clean. For, Abdul, for, Abd, for Muttalib was a person who had a high status in the eyes of people. Hashim, just the way Hashim had a status, it was known that his brothers would also have this status. So if someone or a child like, that looks in this situation where he was dirty, he did not look clean, they thought that this was his slave. And they did not know who this, this boy was when, they, when he first entered Mecca to Al-Mukarramah. So they thought that he was his slave, so they named him Abdul Muttalib, the slave of Muttalib. The uncle's name was Muttalib. So they used this nisbah, this connection of Muttalib to name Abdul Muttalib, Abdul Muttalib. The, the slave of Abdul Muttalib. And because of the way that Abdul Muttalib, Shayba looked in this instance, Muttalib, the uncle, did not want to st state that this is my nephew. Because he did not look presentable for a person who was in st of a status. Inshallah, we will conclude here and we will continue in the next halaqa, inshallah. Subhanallah.